Put your hands together all over the building. Come on, we serve a great God. Hallelujah. I thank God for the radical folks that's in here. I thank God for the people that are willing to push in another level. I thank God for the people that are really willing to push in the midnight hour. The Bible says uh, that when Paul and Silas prayed and at midnight that they were released out of the prison, 
Hallelujah. I believe that there's a prison releasing anointing in this house. Come on, give God a praise. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Listen, for those of you who know me, I'm not a long-winded preacher. Hallelujah. Either you're going to get it or you're not. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to go forth in the word. I do thank God for this space and this time and this opportunity to minister the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for the senior bishop. Amen. To the presider of this meeting, Dr. Timothy Dees. Amen. To each and every one of you, God's people. And I'd like to give a special shout out tonight. Amen. To Howard Memorial Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Being with us all the way from Pensacola, Florida. Hallelujah. I love you all thank you so much amen ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 and as god moves we'll move just like that some of y'all ain't never been to the club when he move i move just like that hallelujah amen and we're gonna move just like that amen um dr Dees was talking the other day he was saying one of his favorite sports was football mine is too praise the lord oh I didn't forget you, baby. Amen. I'd like to thank God for Mr. All Coffee. No sugar, no cream. The captain of this ship, the one that God has given to me. Amen. My husband, Minister Yasin L. Brown C. Hallelujah. I thank God for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 10, and it reads, Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Real simple subject on tonight. Look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, I'm doing this in the power of his might. Amen. Uh, I, I talk about football all the time because my husband is a football coach. And I have to hear it 24 hours, seven days a week. I'll go to sleep and he's up on his laptop and he's coming up with plays because he's an offensive coordinator. Amen. And he's the assistant head coach. Amen. And he's getting plays and stuff together. And he's up praying for his players because a lot of times young men and people are going through, amen, different situations and circumstances. Amen. So I have to be in it around it all of the time. Not only that is that the Lord has blessed my house with a whole bunch of boys. Praise the Lord. Amen. My daughter's daughter, she's off at college at University of Kentucky. Amen. It's just me and Weeby. I call her Weeby. That's her nickname, but her real name is Mauricia. Me and Weeby are at the house with a whole bunch of testosterone. Amen. So we got bulls and little bullets. Amen. That are running around the house that like to keep up noise, throw balls, hit walls, and all types of stuff. Fight. Everything. Amen. So it's always interesting. Amen. At our house. Amen. But as I talk about football tonight, amen, um, in the trenches. That's what they call it. That's, that's what they call, amen, on the line. I know I got some people in here who understand a little bit about football. But in the trenches is where you got, amen, like they say, you got to be a man. You, got, you, got, you can't be no little boy coming down in here in these trenches. You can't, amen, come up on this line and think that you're going to handle anybody, any, any kind of way that you want to handle any kind of body. Amen. Let the church say amen. Uh, uh, in, in other words, you got to be equipped to handle what happens in there many times we are here in our situations and we are not equipped properly equipped to handle what happens in the trenches handle what happens in deliverance handle what happens when we are faced with somebody who has been raped or molested somebody who's been abused and misused uh, hallelujah but I want you to understand uh, for those of you who are here on tonight amen we doing this in the power of his might Amen. Uh, the standard formation for the O-line and the D-line is you have to have 11 players on both sides. You have the cornerback on defense. You have the cornerback, the outside linebacker, the uh, defensive end, the tackle, the middle linebacker, another tackle, another end, outside linebacker, cornerback, and a safety. Two safeties in the backfield. Praise the Lord. For the offense, you got a wide receiver checking off on the line. 
making sure everything's clear. And, and, and then you got to tackle. You got a guard. Stand up, David. He plays guard. Amen. For West Florida High School. Remember his face. Y'all going to see him soon. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm prophesying to you, son. Amen. Uh, uh, we got sinners. We got the guard. We got another tackle. We got a tight end. We got a quarterback. Then behind the quarterback, we got a fullback or a running back. Then you got a halfback and another running back. See, I've been studying with you. Praise the Lord. And then you got another wide receiver checking off on the line, making sure that they lined up properly. Now, uh, 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 you got to understand that the defense objective is to stop the forward uh, progression of movement through interception, sabotage, and turnover on downs. You got to understand that the enemy is trying to intercept your prayer life. That's why you have to have intercessors that can interrupt the plot and the plans and the tactics of the enemy. Let the church say amen. 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 Not only a dead, amen, they'll cause the sabotage. Have you ever been in a, uh, in a game and sometimes they'll blow the whistle? You're like, Lord, why they blow the whistle? Because somebody jumped outside. And it's a penalty, so they got to back you back. The defense is skilled at setting up the game because the linebackers is hungry. They dogs out there. They, they, yeah. Come on, boy. I'm waiting for you. Come on. If you make it through that line, boy, I got something for you. If you come on through this line, boy, I'm going to knock you on your back. And they talk trash on the line. See, you can't hear this on the NFL, but they dog talking down there. They talking like some big dogs down there because you got to understand that the enemy been talking to you. He been talking to your bloodline. He's been talking to your family. If you think you're going to get through this, I got something waiting for you. If you think you made it through that, will you get through here, boy? I got something for you. But you got to understand that God... That we serve. Let the church say amen. amen. And sometimes the defense is so skillful they can stop your forward progression through a turnover on downs. So you get four downs. Right? Okay, thank you. Just had to check with my coach. All right, coach. All right, so you get four downs. And a lot of times if you don't make the yardage, to get another 10 yards, then you are stopped. And, and, and if you got some good defensive players out there, some of us have been blocked by the tactics and the things that the enemy has had. Amen. And you are on your third down and you're wondering, God, am I going to get the yardage that I need to get a first down in this game? But I come to prophesy to you, those of you who are on your last leg, those of you who feel like you can't make it, that in this third down, that God is going to give you the forward momentum that you need in order to to score another point let the church say amen, amen. hallelujah I'm moving here amen and, and, and then the enemy does not care what he do to stop you he'll use speed agility and tactics to stop the plan of God for your life let me tell you something I, I like to watch safeties work I like to watch them work because see, when the receivers, they get to run and they route, they checking off. The ball is hiked to the quarterback. The O-line begins to guard the quarterback and he stands back in the pocket. Praise the Lord. I hope y'all can see this. And when the quarterback gets back into the pocket, come here. Uh, you, not you. You receiver. You. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You look, you looking real Jalen, um, Jalen Hurts is to me tonight. Praise the Lord. You play football? Okay. Come on up here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want the people to see you. You ran a 4 4? Oh, 4 2? What? Oh, he said, don't ask me that in public. <laughs> so, come and stand behind me. The quarterback gets in the pocket. The center has hiked the ball. Quarterback got the pocket. So, he is now surrounded by his help. Many of us, we are trying to make positions and plays in life, but you don't realize that you got some help. Come here, David and uh, Stefan. Come here. Uh-huh. Come here. Yeah, you. Uh-huh. Yeah, come here. See, they, they just don't put anybody on the old line. You got to have some big boys. You got to have them boys that eat steaks and hamburgers and french fries and a little grease in their life. Uh, get over there, receiver. See, these are my babies here. These, and they just babies too. Praise the Lord. See, sometimes God will 
place you in a situation where he'll put help all around you. Because when the enemy comes, y'all know what to do when the ball is hype. Y'all protect the quarterback. Come on, back up. Do what you got to do. So they begin to surround him. He's protected. Anybody that comes this way, Anybody that try to get through David? See, when you learn things on a O-line and you're a tackle, you got to use your hands a certain way. Because certain things are called holding if you grab the shoulder pads the wrong way. You got to learn how to pop off. You got to learn how to kick step. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. What? Uh, I'm married to a coach. Praise the Lord. So, he... They, they do the kick step and they got to use their hands to, to keep them at bay. You don't realize, but in prayer, and then I'm going to shake it in In prayer, God has strategically placed the old eye in your favor. While you are praying, the old line has you surrounded. While you are fasting, God has sent angels to a camp around about you. So while you're praying, you think you're back there in the pocket alone, but you don't realize you got help. Check off, receiver. So he didn't check the line. See, see, the, the quarterback got the ball, but he realized I got a target on me now. So I got to get rid of what's in my hand so that we can keep the forward progression. Listen, firstborn church, what God is saying, that God is getting ready to toss some of you the bomb that you have been in position. You have been checked off on the line. You ready and willing. Now, all you ready and say, blue 42, blue 42, hot, hot. Receiver. He know he's he 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 know he's checked off. He he know he's good. And when they call the play, he run his route. Because see, you got to know your route. Because see, if you run the wrong route, you'll run into a situation. But if you know your footwork, if you know your footwork, you can pivot and move in a situation to position yourself to catch. The ball. And I throw it to him. Now the receiver got the ball. He's in the position. Where BJ at? Oh, I ain't got but you. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, you be my safety. All right. Come on. There you go. I need a safety. So he got the ball. Come on, jump down off stage. You good. You ain't gonna fall. Praise the Lord. So he got so the receiver got the ball. I told y'all we got a safety. The safety is on defense. The safety been back there watching you. He another one of them things that got the, the shield on his face. He a tall, slim joker usually. The, the safety got that rabbit type of speed. The safety is the one that can catch the things that get in the backfield. The safety is the one that sometimes we don't expect to do because we don't even expect that nobody is there because sometimes the receivers get a little cocky and sometimes the receivers think they got a, a clear, amen, route to the end zone, amen, but there is still some adversity that you got to feed. Now, what the receiver has to do, he got to trust his footwork and his timing because see as he comes the safety is backing up Come on. and what the safety will do he'll run with him because he know he can't necessarily touch him because see he, he can interfere pass interference which will cause for them to get a first down and cause for the forward progression sometimes your enemies are running beside you Sometimes your enemies are running beside you, amen, and when they realize that you get close enough to them, see, we're going to pretend like he ain't got the ball. McShane throw the ball back to the quarterback. This is McShane. He played receiver. He graduated. He's going to Bethune-Cookman High School, uh, College. Y'all clap for him. So, quarterback done called the play. He done checked off. He running down the field. Go down there where the safety at. Now, the safety been waiting for you all day because, see, we've been using the linebacker. We've been using, amen, excuse me, the running back. 
and, and, and see, he's been waiting for some action to come in the backfield because he know now we've been running the ball. Now we got to throw the ball. And he said, listen, I'm going to try my best to intercept it. See, the enemy has been trying to his best to intercept your prayer life. He's been trying his best to intercept your blessing. He's been trying his best, amen, to block, amen, your forward progression with your children. Hallelujah. But I come to declare unto you, those of you who have been practicing and getting in the word, who know your route, who know how to drop step, amen, who know how to get out of the way of the enemy that can pivot around and still receive the ball. We are in an hour now that God wants to set us up so in such a position that we ain't got no choice but to receive the ball. Let me tell you something. What I love, amen, about the receivers is they got speed too. Speed against speed. Timing against timing. But the advantage that the receiver has, even though the safety may have watched film on them, because, see, the enemy been watching film on you. He been studying your prayer life. He been studying your family. He been studying the hereditariness of, of your bloodline. He's been watching film on you. But now it's coming to the real thing now. The real, the, where the rubber meets the road. Where, where it's getting ready to pay attention to what you're getting ready to do. Amen. And so now he's watched you on film. Now he's going to see if you really run the full two or if you run a full four. He really want to see really what you're going to really work with out there. Because he know what he working with. Amen. Let me tell you something in here. Amen. The Bible tells us that the race is not given to the swim nor to the strong but those that can endure to the end many of us are going through situations but I want you to tap your neighbor and say neighbor I've been conditioned for this Hallelujah. You got to understand, amen, the time that they've been in the weight room, the time that they've been doing the squats, amen, and power lifting and eating clean, amen, the times that the coaches and had them sequestered, amen, off from everybody, amen, you had to be in by a certain time, amen, you had to go in and be certain places at a certain time. God had you strategically placed, oh, I can't go nowhere, I can't do nothing, my mama won't let me go, my brothers won't let me go, I feel like I'm locked down, but God had you locked down for such a time as this because if he would have released you prematurely you would have got out here and you would have messed up what God had for your life I want you to understand that your delay was not a denial and what God has for you it is for you high five your neighbor and say neighbor it is for me hallelujah hallelujah amen uh, 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 many of us have been operating on a JV level and the enemy has been using his varsity, collegiate, and NFL tactics on you because you were ill-prepared for the task at hand. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to withstand. Many of us, amen, we are ill-equipped to get out here with the dogs. It is a Moshiach. We, we ill-equipped, amen, to get out here in the trenches. We ill-equipped, amen, to handle this warfare, amen. But God is saying to you, he said, get back in the weight room. Get back in the weight room. Get back in the fight. Get back in there. Change your diet. Change your eating habit. Get back in the weight room. Amen. But Pastor Melody, it was so heavy. Amen. Let me tell you something about maxing out because I used to lift weights in high school. You bench press, the highest weight I ever bench press, and I did it one time, 225, praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, I could squat way more than that, but bench pressing is when they put it on the bar. I think it's the bar is 45. You got two skillets, they're 45 each, and they put some more on there. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, you down there, amen, and when you lifting weights, amen, it wasn't nothing for me to lift the bar. I could do that in my sleep. It wasn't nothing for me to lift 110. I could do that in my sleep too. But when they start applying more weight to the bar. When the Lord start applying more people in your life that you were having to minister to. When the Lord start applying more pressure. Amen. To the point of your praise. Amen. In your prophecy. Amen. That's when the weight start getting a little cumbersome. Wait a minute now. This is heavier than I've ever lifted before. This is heavier than I've ever imagined it could be. Amen. But you got somebody that stands here and they're called a spotter. And they stand over you and say, all right, you ready? You say, yeah. So they say, all right, I got you, I got you. So they help you get it off the bar. Mm. And they put it in your hands, but they still spot you. 
because they're a little bit stronger than you. Many of you think that you're going to fail. Many of you think that you're going to falter. But the Lord said, I'm spotting you on this one. So, the easiest point of resistance is when it's coming down. Because, you know, what goes up must come down. But now, the push to get it back up. So now, you're on your back, and you praying to God, Jesus, everybody, as you don't pee, poop, pass gas, or anything, and you got the bar, and you push it. And, and you hear the, everybody else in the weight room cheer you on. You can do it. You got it. I, I know it's heavy, but you can do it. See, there's some people that you need to surround yourself in your life that when it gets heavy for you, when the weight gets cumbersome for you, that they'll push you in prayer and say, you can do it. Don't give up. I know it's heavy. I know you're tired. But if you can just push past this, if you can get it up a little bit higher, I'm there. If you can just get it back into the hands of the spotter so he can help you put it back on the bar, you maxed out. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to close here, y'all. Just give me two seconds. Many of us have been on defense. Y'all can go ahead and have a seat. Many of us have been on defense. But the tables tonight have turned in your favor. I need you to look at your neighbor tonight and I need you to look at them real good. And I need you to let them know what the enemy meant for evil. God is about to turn it around for my good. Hallelujah. If you can imagine Friday night lights. If you can imagine yourself being on a football field on a Friday night. Uh, and the band is playing their good song. Uh, hallelujah. The fight song. Uh, the cheerleaders are doing their best cheer. Uh, hallelujah. Go fight. Win. Uh, hallelujah. Can you imagine uh, being down there uh, on the gridiron? Uh, mm, uh, can you imagine uh, being down in the trenches uh, for the ones that you love? Uh, can you imagine uh, being out there? Uh, and say I got to check off this time uh, hallelujah I got to make sure I run my route uh, because my team is dependent on me uh, I can't do it by myself uh, but I need you uh, I need you uh, I need you uh, and what God has for me uh, it is for me uh, but I want you to understand tonight uh, hallelujah that what God is getting ready to take us uh, firstborn church of the living God uh, hallelujah we're going to have to be conditioned for this uh, we're going to have to get prepared for this uh, we're going to have to prepare our minds uh, our bodies and our spirits uh, amen to go uh, into another level of prayer uh, another level of consecration uh, another level of the anointing uh, let the church say amen. amen hallelujah as I get ready to take my seat uh, the bible tells us in 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 Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 the bible the bible the bible tells me he said finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Many of us have been trying to fight uh, on our own terms, uh, using our old ways, our old methodologies, and our old ways of thinking. Um, but the Lord says this time, uh, I need you to lean and depend on me. Uh, we used to sing a song in the old church uh, that says, I learn how to lean uh, and depend on Jesus. Uh, and I found out that if I trust him, he will look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he will, he will provide. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God uh, that you may well be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, for we wrestle not uh, against flesh and blood. Uh, this ain't your enemy. Uh, your sister ain't your enemy. Uh, your brother ain't your enemy. Uh, it is the spirit that is operating in them. Uh, so you got to pray strategically uh, and bind up uh, the hand of the enemy. Uh, bind up uh, the words of witchcraft. Uh, bind up uh, what the enemy has thought he's going against your life. Uh, you got to learn how to be strategic in prayer uh, and tell God uh, that God I'm calling on you uh, and I'm calling for the old line. Uh, to come and stand for me I'm calling for the old line To surround me right now Cause I got the rock in my hand 
Hallelujah. I got to get rid of it. Let the church say amen. The Bible tells us that there are brigades and divisions of demons that are after you, that are after your families, that are after your finances. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that the curse of poverty is broken off of my life. Mm -hmm. Let the church say amen. Many of us were scared to prophesy the money to our own own self but you got to learn how to speak over yourself let the church say amen some of us let me talk to me tonight melody you need to prophesy to yourself and speak to your bones and command your bones to line up with the word of God for the Bible says he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for my iniquities the chastisement of my peace was upon him and by his stripes I am healed I am healed I am healed what killed my daddy won't kill me what was on my bloodline it stops here right now I don't have diabetes I won't have heart disease I won't have a stroke let the church say yes say yes the bible says that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So what I begin to do is to write another chapter of my life. I begin to speak over myself. I begin to declare the word that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. Let the church say amen. You got to understand that we are in a precarious situation. We are in a time now where the enemy wants to muzzle your mouth. He wants to keep you silent. He wants you to go through so much hurt and pain that you can't even verbalize what is in your heart. But I want you to take your hands and pull the muzzle off and say, I'm getting ready to talk now. Hallelujah, because I talk Talking God deserves a talking praise. Let the church say amen. Say it. Listen. Listen. Many of y'all been looking at me and say, why is she quoting all these scriptures? I went to the playbook. Many of you are looking for a prophetic word. But the Lord said, I've given you the playbook. I've given you 66 books to thump the enemy upside his head. And we sit here paying and patty cake. But the Bible tells me that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. The Bible tells me that the Lord is my light and my salvation who shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when my enemies come on here dogs when my enemies line up have y'all ever seen defensive players line up can you get in a defensive stance for me Okay. Yeah. See? See? Yeah. Come here. Come here, David. Uh huh. You know I was going to use you. Turn this way. Uh huh. I'm going to put my son in front of you. Don't rough him up. Uh huh. See, sometimes they'll put him in the pit. Get down there in the O line stance. Eko shikanada di do shaya. Robo shikanada di do shikin. Ima babo shikanada di do shikin. See, see, the defense has a specific stance, and the O line has another stance. Now, 
I'm going to do a call, and when I say three, I want y'all to get up, and I want y'all to tackle each other, but don't hurt nobody, yeah? Praise the Lord. All right, one, two, three. See? Hey, 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 hey. See, sometimes the defense, the defense think they got you. I know y'all going to get mad at me for this, but I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. See? The defense was down here, but the, off the offensive line, he got my back. He done put his hands on him. Come on, come on. See, many of y'all trying to fight things that are bigger than you. And the Lord says, if you will let me do it for you, I'll put my hands on a situation that you've been trying to handle on your own self. But if you let God be God in your life, he can handle it better than you can. Leave it alone. See, many of us, <laughs> let me go here real quick. We, we've been cheerleading on the sideline. We done got distracted on the sideline because it seemed like we ain't going to get in the game. We over there drinking all the Gatorade, all the water. We talking to the folks in the stand. Ain't got your helmet on, but one of your players been injured and they call your name. Come in, Stefan. Yeah, come on. Hustle up. Will you be ready when, when he call your name? Will you? See, see, he was over there chewing bubble gum and talking to everybody in the sand. And, 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 and they called him up. But one thing about it, he didn't have good training. You may have called me and I may not have been all the way ready, but I got good training. Because I may not have been, amen, on the first people that they call. Amen. I may not have been on the first line or, you know, the, you know, the A squad. Yeah. But, but I've been studying my position. I've been studying in prayer. I've been studying in fasting. And I'm equipped to handle the pressure in my life. You may see. Take your seat. I, I, I want to speak to you all today from a place and a posture of complete humility as God is shifting us occasionally the, the quarterback will have to call an audible he'll have to call uh, what is it baby when a quarterback has to change the play huh? a check down He'll have to call a check down or a hot. And everybody who has studied the playbook can adjust. And the quarterback has the ability, your pastor, the prophet, has the ability to see things on the line that the OC may not see. And so you got to be equipped to be able to adjust and get in position so that you can be ready. Check. I'm good. I'm good, ref. Because you got to talk to the line judge. You got to make sure that my feet, because I can't get another penalty, I got to get in position so I, I, I can be ready to receive what God has for me. We are in an hour that God says, it's your time now. You got to be in position. You got to get in the posture of what God is getting ready to do concerning you and your life. Think it not strange. The warfare that you've had to endure to get here. Think it not strange. The warfare that you had to endure in prayer because the testimonies are coming. The testimonies are coming. Woman of God, the camels are coming for you. Every dry place, God is sending you help. God is sending you divine help. In every place, in every situation that you need. Lord, the money been funny, the change been strange. God said, don't you worry about it. I'm working it out for you. I'm working it out for you. 
Pastor Leslie, I was, I was in my room earlier and I was laying down. And the Lord brought you before my face. And I said, Lord, I said, oh, I, I said, this is my sister. I love her. The Lord told me that he's getting ready to restore the dryness. God is getting ready to rain on you like never before. The expansion of the ministry. I know y'all been in that place for a while, but the Lord said he been talking to you and it's time to move. Because so much greatness is there and so many people are there, but the word is getting out. Quiet is kept because you don't like a whole bunch of attention on you. Mm. Praise the Lord. The Lord says, I've turned my spotlight on you. And I've calls for her favor from the north, the south, the east, and the west to come find you. People are getting ready to come to your ministry. I just want to come. I just want to be here. I don't know why I'm here. I just want to be here. Because the evangelism that you've placed in your children and in your grandchildren, they are your legs. They are running Hallelujah, with the anointing that it was placed in them from, a, from, the, from the womb. God says, I'm running for you. Because you say, Lord, sometimes I'd be tired. The Lord says, I'm sending you your legs. Mm. Jesus. I'm sending you your legs. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get your own shop. Get your own shop. Get your own shop. Get your own shop. Because too many people done burnt you. And it's been up one time, down another. You said, Lord, I'm tired of this merry-go-round. Lord said, get your own and I'll establish you. And it's going to grow. And you gonna, they're going to be coming from other cities, even Jacksonville. And even other places to come and sit at your hands because your hands are anointed to do what you do. But get your own. Because wealth is getting ready to hit your life like never before. And the public embarrassment from a private situation. The Lord says I'm getting ready to restore your faith again. And your hope in love again because the place in your heart has been so hurt and so broken and so shattered you said Lord I'm done with it and I'm okay being in this position and in this place and I'm done but the Lord says why did you give up on me and I have the final say oh shit no 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 my And it's okay to cry because you need this release. Sometimes you got to get into a place where you are so uncomfortable and so privately miserable that the Lord, when he sends you help, it helps you in such a place in your mind because you've been internalizing this pain. But the Lord God heals you on tonight. He heals your mind. He heals the broken and the shattered places in your mind. Yes, God. Come on, people of God, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Mother in the white with the black glasses and the black sandals on. Yes. The Lord says, I've heard your prayers concerning your family. The Lord says, thank you for trusting me enough to turn down your plate for them. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to do a turnaround concerning the situation. The Lord says, prison is not an option. And addiction is broken on tonight. Come on, celebrate God as if it was happening to you. As if it was happening for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we praise God. Everybody's standing all over the building. We're getting ready to leave. God's going to help you being with the abandonment. 
and he's going to help you with the brokenness because as as handsome as you look on the outside and as good as everything has been there's been a place of questions and just a place Mephibosheth you've been dropped but the Lord says he's getting ready to restore you to the place he's getting ready to cause for you to sit back at the table of where you need to be the Lord said it's okay concerning the familiar relationships the Lord says I'm going to heal the heart and I'm going to cause for the conversations to be able to be had because there's some things you need to talk about it's some things you need to get off your chest. It's some things that you've been going through that don't nobody. And I bind up depression off of you in the name of Jesus. Depression is not your portion. Anxiety is not your portion. Lay hands on him. Lay hands on him. And there's getting ready to come a fire that is about to hit your belly like never before see we got to pray for our men because our men are being attacked like never before our men are under attack amen because the hand of the enemy it was not by accident or happenstance that i had him to be the quarterback because he has a ceo anointing on his life And he's going to be in a position where he's going to have to give instructions and orders for people to go and do what they got to do and the enemy has been fighting him in the private. I need you all to pray. I need you all to pray. I need you all to pray. And I bind up anxiety. And I pray against the wolves. that have been trying to find you out and the nightmares and the terrors that you've been having because God is awakening the anointing that is on your life you are such a threat to the enemy that the enemy tries to sometimes muzzle you and tries to keep you quiet and tries to keep you silent hallelujah amen but woman of God there is such a grace on your life favor Concerning scholarships. <laughs> it's already done. I wish you would clap and praise God like this was your baby. And you ain't gonna have to pay nothing back. I'm almost done. I promise you, I'm almost done. I bind up headaches off of you because you are an intellect and you are a thinker. But I bind up headaches because strokes are not your portion. What was on your bloodline is not your portion because you got to run. God is getting ready to cause for you to run this race your feet are anointed and God is getting ready to cause for an elevation in your life but you're gonna have to trust him more than you've ever trusted him and I bind up the spirit of retaliation against your testimony because you are a warfare preacher 
and you, you, you hear and see things that other people can't see and you're a prophet, man of God. But the Lord says, he's getting ready to take you there and take care of you while you're there. Trust him. When he says leave and to go, you do it and watch God bless your life. Hallelujah. The business is yours. The business. You are a businessman. The business is yours. You have a heart and a love and an outreach for young people. The Lord says, start it. If you don't have your nonprofit already, start it. There is wealth waiting on you. There are young people that are waiting on you. The Lord says, go ahead and get in position and get in place. Because he's getting ready to move you in a whole nother dimension. Your dreams of where you have saw yourself and you woke up and you sat on the side of the bed and kind of laughed like, huh, all right, God. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to make a reality for you. But it's going to be imperative that you keep your hands clean. Because the enemy is going to fight you concerning your future and where he wants to take you. But as long as you keep your hands clean, God is getting ready to call for your name to be known in the city. You're getting ready to sit down with the mayor and you're getting ready to talk business concerning the young people because that's where your heart is being. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to do it for you. Watch God. Hallelujah. Whenever you're ready, preacher. Whenever you're ready. The Lord says he can muzzle it and put it on ice if you want him to, but you really don't want him to. But the Lord says he's ready for you. Because this fire in here, you ain't going to be able to dance over it no more. You ain't going to be able to tongue talk over it no more. You're going to find yourself and you're going to be slick trying to do it. You're going to put a word on Facebook and you're going to get off. And the Lord says, no, I told you to preach. And you're going to say, well, I did, Lord. I released the word. He said, no, you're not following the instructions. The Lord says this fire in here is getting ready to get so hot. It's getting ready to burn so great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because God is awakening because he needs you. And I know the question that you have, Lord, I need you to handle some things. The Lord says, I got this, but I need you to submit everything to me. And watch me do it for you. Watch me do it for you. Watch me do it for you. Woman of God. Be careful for nothing but with everything. Prayer and supplication of the Lord. Your anointing is attractive. And it's going to attract the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I pray that God gives you the spirit of discernment. So that you don't cast your pearls before the swine. Because the enemy can't stay in you or your praise. And he'll do anything and whatever he can to water it down. The Lord says when you go home another level of consecration for you. Because in prayer, that's why he's maturing the anointing that's on your life. Hokoshaya. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Lift your hands. You ain't, that's your husband. Lift your hands. God is about to catapult your business on a whole nother level. God is about to send the increase and he's about to sit. God is about to send the vehicle that you really need. Because transporting the equipment that y'all been transporting has caused wear and tear that y'all did not want to have on the vehicle that you have now. So the Lord says, I'm getting ready to send you the work truck that you need to be able to candle the load. And there's a song coming out of you, sir. 
a, a song. You're getting ready to, I don't know if you're a singer or not, but you're getting ready to sing. This is like, you finna get happy. You're just gonna be walking around the house and just gonna be singing. This is what I your wife gonna be looking at you like, what is wrong with you? You be like, I'm just happy. I don't know why I got this song in my spirit. But it, it's gonna cause for so much joy to hit your home. And the peace of God goes back with you in Jesus' name. And the peace of God goes back with you in Jesus' name. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding goes back with you in Jesus' name. And your business, yeah, your business is about to come down. Yes, ma'am. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's about to blow up all the way. It's about to, it's about to, it's about to go. You think differently than other people think. And you, you research a lot. You, you study and you research a lot of things. But the Lord says your business is getting ready to go uh, uh, to a whole other level. You're getting ready to start designing things for people you're getting ready to start doing all types of stuff and it's going to be another level of income and it's going to be a, a residual income that comes to your life God is getting ready to do it because you've been saying Lord I got this degree <laughs> Lord I got this degree but the Lord says I'm going to use that degree but I'm going to use what I've given you from a child that calls for wealth to hit your house amen Come on, clap your hands all over the building. God bless you. God bless you. We're getting ready to go. Listen, I need everybody that would sow just $10. If you just send it in, cash app it, or is there a bucket around? Is there a bucket? Get a bucket, Brother Kevin. Just so $10 if you've got it. Sister, 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 sister. If you want to cash app it, just put, uh, put ES in the cash app. It's the same, The Firstborn Inc. Put ES. That means evangelistic service. Amen. If you want to, if you want to bring it up, you can bring it up or he'll come to you. Come on, let's bless this woman of God tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. Listen, some of y'all might not have heard me say, but I guarantee you, and I'll go ahead and tell you, before you get home, this money that you sold in this convention, somebody, before you get home, God's going to meet you before you get home, and he's going to give you more than you gave in the convention. You can't ever beat God, give it no matter how. Listen, we finna go, but I'm going to tell you, and I receive it. Folk look at me, they say, D's, you got money. I used to say, don't say that. But now when they say D, I say, I surely do. And I'm just telling y'all in here, you either got faith or you don't. I ain't telling my business, but I'm just telling you, you either have faith or you don't. And I just believe God that it shall be, even as it was told unto me. And for about nine of y'all, and that's quite a bit for this evangelistic service, I'm finna go, we finna go for about nine people in here. FaceTime video. I don't know what that is, but that ain't God. FaceTime video. Praise the Lord. That came on through. That came on through. <laughs> for about nine people in here. And we, we, we're going when I say this. And all you got to do is just believe God. For about nine people in this building. Money will never again be another issue in your life. Y'all trying to figure it out. God just said for about nine people in here. I know what I hear God say. Hold the music because they, they, they can praise him without this. You better receive this. And listen, let me go ahead and tell you because some people thinking this doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a millionaire. But what it means is you'll never have to want for anything because even when the money looked like it ran out, God will pour more in where that came from. For about nine people in this room, money will never again be another issue. Won't be a hindrance, won't be a block. 
I speak overflow and increase over your life. Go in Jesus' name.